scared like to go to university and study either journalism or sports journalism. I'd really like to go into politics after university. Hopefully I'd like to get into medicine at university and just become a doctor. That's really my only dream. I think the, the main idea with the mentoring programme um, was recognising that very few young people from Springburn Academy and similar schools in Glasgow actually progress into higher education um, and it's well below the percentage we would expect and hope for in relation to other schools and particularly more middle class schools. Um, the other issue is that the number is even smaller for those young people that progress into the very competitive courses. So if we're thinking about medicine, dentistry, law, etc., there's very few people move into those courses. Um, and so for us there was an issue there. We knew we had very capable young people. We knew we could produce uh, you know, good exam results for them. They could work well with the school and yet they're not making the progress that we would expect. And for us as researchers that was a very interesting area. We have very high aspirations for the young people in our city. Attainment is crucial. They need to get good qualifications in order to be able to have choices as to where they go, whether it's college or university or employment. And we've been very focused on raising attainment. The OECD publications show that there is a consistent link between attainment and poverty, and Glasgow's no different. The mentoring project started at Springburn Academy a number of years ago, encouraged by Strathclyde University wanting to do some research on social mobility. The head teacher at Springburn Academy, Liz Irvine, strong connections with the university, wanted to be as aspirational as possible for her young people. And so working with Strathclyde University developed the mentoring project. Springburn Academy is a comprehensive school in the northeast of Glasgow, uh, serving <coughs> what would I think be traditionally called an SIMD area of about the fifth poorest in Scotland. I think it is so important to analyse, to look at, what it is that, that we need to do in order to close that gap to enable young people to achieve and go on to university. Because if we don't, then there's a whole stretch of people not getting the opportunity to go to university, but also it's adding on to that kind of poverty gap. And it's also society loses out on a whole a bunch of creative people who aren't getting the opportunity to go to university um, because of where they've been born and brought up. The attainment cap is the, the black mark in Scottish education um, and that's the mark that says it matters significantly, very significantly in Scotland where you live, more so than in other countries. If we look at Springburn Academy we know there's a, a very clear attainment gap between what the young people can achieve there academically and what they can achieve if they came from a middle class background and in Scotland that gap has been consistent, persistent over a number of years. And that's the gap that we're really trying to close. How do you get that individual resilience to be able to take on a university course? And I think that's where our schools do work incredibly hard and with increasing success is about giving them that broader range of experiences to give them the confidence and the resilience. And we start as low as three years old at nursery. We start building that confidence and resilience in our young people, but it's tough. I think when we first started working in the school, um, there was a, a, a small project that looked at young people's social networks that we drew on um, to sort of try and understand why this sort of pathway, if you like, is, is more difficult or problematic for these young people. One of the key things that came out of that was in a group of about 25 to 30 young people, we only had two of them who had any connection to higher education. One of them had an uncle and one of them had an aunt who had gone to university. So in terms of them understanding the process of applying to university, um, what happens in the university, what course you apply for, what courses you need for what professions, and then below that, what you need to study at school to access those courses and so on, we knew that that was an area that they had no access to understanding or knowledge of um, in a way that 
you know, was sort of careful and understood where they were. A lot of the time I listen. I listen to what their aspirations are. I listen to what their difficulties are. And then I try and set out for them what the various alternatives are to medicine so that they have thought through all the many professions allied to medicine which are important. I try and bring them a broadsheet and discuss with them an article from The Guardian, for instance, ask them what they, um, I let them flick through the paper, ask them to look at a, an article, and then we discuss it critically, what are the, what are you being told, what does it mean for the broader health of, of the country. I speak to them a bit about the importance of having breakfast, of having a structured um, way of studying, of planning their studying, of approaching in, uh, exams, all these sort of exam techniques, all the things that can just make life a bit easier for them when they come to uh, cope with all the demands of uh, year five and their hires is very demanding, they're having to do a lot and a lot of them aren't aware that they should also be seen to be volunteering, doing some other work, having other components to their lives. This is the first in English? Yeah. yeah. Texture analysis. So it's like what you try to do is not to replace a maths teacher, but what you try to do is to give them a skill at, at solving problems, a skill at being able to read again the map of how to tackle things. We've specifically targeted retirees and using the university alumni system, um, both within Strathclyde University and now hopefully in Glasgow University, we've got a very rich reservoir of retired professionals. Not only do they understand the pathways that young people need to move into certain professions, they understand the landscape of higher education. They also generally, through their own life experience, understand the, the difficulties some of these young people might face. They can help them in sort of peaks and troughs of, of confidence. They helped me with my English, so she was working on me with the close reading and the essays. And obviously because she used to be a teacher as well, she, she knew like, what they were looking for. And she was giving some advice of what to do, how to get into journalism and what they're looking for as well. So she's helped me with work experience and writing my personal statement. Um, basically they're just informal meetings, like in school, you know, like just going in to the library, sitting down, having a chat, seeing how things are at school, at home, what I do outside the school, things like that. You know? It's been very useful because through Hillary I got to know a lot of things that I need to get done that I didn't know about in order to apply for medicine, such as the UK CAT and the grades and everything I need to get in order to, in order to apply it. and she's also been really good for work experience as well because thanks to her I've got a lot of work experience which is really hard to get if you're still in school at hospitals mainly so it's been really really helpful and she was also there to help through when I was doing all the exams and things and things were getting a bit on top of each other she was really helpful. The, the UCAT test is basically a psychological test it's a large um, almost 11 plus type test the questions are in various categories, as you know, the, the, the quantitative reasoning and the decision analysis and the verbal reasoning. Um, the questions are not particularly difficult, but they are against the clock, and you have to be able to make quick decisions on them. And the, the, the main thing you can do with such psychological tests is practice. Um, and that's what we've been trying to get the students to do, is to practice those tests in exam conditions. One shot at the answer and move on, and, the, and, and that has what I think has worked reasonably well. There's a number of different areas that are really critical in terms of a young person moving into higher education. They need to understand the profession they're aiming for, they need to know a lot about it, they need to have had work experience in that area, and they need to be able to argue with someone perhaps at an interview and make a case that they understand what it is they want to do and why they want to do it. To get into that position you need to have a lot of knowledge and you need to have the right connections. You need to have access to people that work in those professions, you need to have work experience with those people in their environments and these are critical things when it comes to progressing and writing on a UCAS form why you want to go into law, why you want to be a doctor, perhaps why you want to go into veterinary science. I'd say crucially alongside that though there's an emotional support. Um, a lot of our early research showed how important it was that young people were encouraged. So a young person might apply or start thinking about doing a course, maybe about going into medicine, dentistry, law or whatever. Something can happen along the way. They maybe get a, a poor result in one of their exams. Um, they're disappointed by that. And all of a sudden, 
it's impossible that they can do that. In their minds, it becomes impossible that they can follow that course. So a lot of what the mentoring does and a lot of what we tried to help with was that kind of roller coaster of emotions and, and sort of commitment. The second girl I had wanted to be a midwife or a nurse, um, but her hires after fifth year, the exam results were poor. And she just could see that basically she had to think again. About, I don't know what inspired me, but something did. I said, do you have a wee job? And she says, yes. And she got animated, really quite bright and animated. I work at Poundland. And I, oh, great. And I said, oh, tell me about your job. What sort of things do you do? She said, oh, we have team meetings and we organize seasonal events and we have this uh, structure how we do things and we, um, we have our, our shifts and I've learned how to do the cashing up and the tills and, I, and oh, yes, it's all very important. And I said, you do realize there is a career in retail management and that what you're doing in Poundland, you could use as good experience to go into retail management. Uh, I said, there are courses on that. She said, I've got to go and see the careers people. Do you think if I went along and said, I'm interested in retail management, they might listen to me? <laughs> I said, I think they will very much like to listen to you. Um, and so she started thinking about retail management. In fact, I think she would have walked out of school at the end of that month and not come back if we hadn't found something that made her feel that she had a career and she had prospects. I try and take them to uh, conventions at the Royal College if there's something that's of interest and so they get exposed to something that is university based and that will be of a high quality and is something that they can listen to and they've responded wonderfully, they really engage with that sort of event. I went to the biochemistry lab for two days and one day I was in the labs and another day I was in the office with the doctor. While I was in the office it was really good because I really got to see a feel of what they actually did and how all the tests they take in the hospital really does make a difference in diagnosing people. Obviously schools are, are their, their teachers, uh, that's what they were trained to do. They're not actual engineers and by having the mentorship project I was able to speak to a real civil engineer and uh, basically he provided me a whole other prospect that I never had, I wouldn't have had at home either because my mum's a nurse so she, it was a completely different field. What we're really trying to do there is replicate those links and those experiences that other young people can have through their families that our young people can't. But it's so people are bringing this great breadth and width of experience that they've gained over the years. So it's not it's about tutoring, but it's also about that wider thing of mentoring, of saying, well, oh, you're interested in applying to Glasgow University to do engineering. I know somebody who, uh, you know, who I have a friend who's a lecturer. I can take you there to the university. We, we can have a look around because people have now, at long last, recognised that the middle classes, parents knew somebody who was a GP or whatever, a dentist, and could get them experience, and it's a little bit harder for our young people. I think what the mentoring offers is an individual who can sit with them for you know, upwards of an hour a week, talking through these ideas, giving them one-to-one -one support, um, and that's something which cumulatively over a year or, or longer in the mentoring programme I find, or I think, is hugely significant. It's something that schools can't provide because they haven't the capacity to work with young people in that way. The time that's required to get to know a young person, to, to really work with them. And if you're talking about their sort of emotional well-being and how confident they feel and so on, it's something that needs to come from somebody that understands them and knows them personally and is a friend, if you like. I would definitely recommend doing the, the mentorship project because it's not every day you get to meet an actual professional. Um, a lot of people don't have this opportunity. And what it does is it, it, it shows you basically what is expected of you. You get to speak to someone who's, no, who's basically done it all. I think it's a great thing, especially if maybe you're struggling with to cope with all the different all the different challenges throughout the year because I know it can make quite a lot of work for different people, especially if you get stuff outside school. So I think any support that you got offered you should take it in both hands. To feel that I've actually supported two people into the careers that they wanted um, and to let them know that they are they are the people who should be going to these these courses and these places. 
And one time when I was walking out the first one, um, I just commented to her, I said, you're just the kind of person who's going to love the university. You're just going to enjoy all the new experiences, the new people, the new ideas, and you're just going to flourish. She grew two inches at my side, and I said, um, has nobody told you how intelligent you are? No. Um, just to be able to tell somebody that they they are intelligent, they should be going to university, they should be doing these careers that they've aspired to, um, gives me a great satisfaction. There is nothing like somebody coming in from outside who uh, makes you feel worthwhile and that you're special and that you have an opportunity as a young person to be listened to, to be made to feel special, that somebody takes an interest in you and in your work and it's not just your family. So that's really important that, that you're felt to be good enough. Mentoring in, in the UK is kind of fledgling at the moment and particular for the, particularly for these groups of young people there's very strong evidence that it can be very, very effective. The project is working in three schools in Glasgow and we hope to extend that with some significant further funding. We hope to extend that potentially to six, perhaps eight schools. Once we work in, in those schools, we'll be able to de develop a very careful model of how to deliver this form of mentoring. And I think the potential then will be to make it a, a Glasgow-wide project available to m many more young people. And it will also produce a model of how to actually deliver this form of mentoring, which I think would be replicable right across Scotland and, and the wider UK. One of my absolute goals is that we reduce the impact of poverty on children's lives and this project will help do that because although we've year on year increased the number the, or the percentage of young people going to university, there's much more for us to do. 16% it was in 2002 and in 2012, 29.3% went to higher education. That's a fantastic achievement, but my goodness, we have a long way to go. There are more young people in Glasgow who deserve to go to university.